uh, all and um, welcome back to my YouTube channel and um, this is Magista uh, it's been a long time since since of my last video today I just I will just try to analyze the the music the the, the part of this part of the second part of Johann Sebastian Bach Symphonia 1 and I will just analyze the first section which is grave adagio so the meaning of this piece, uh, the meaning of the first introduction, is written. Um, the the I mean, metronome was not invented back in like back in like seventeenth century and so on. Um, to the classical era in music. Um, so that's why it's usually written like grave or dodge and so on. You know the rules. But in this section, it also says grave means like very slowly I mean for like 40 beats per second and the dodger is like around like 65 to 80 one you name it so the introduction means that you should play slowly when the time comes and you should also play a little bit faster than slowness than slowness so the audience doesn't get doesn't really get lost in the piece so the meaning of this first introduction is to give the audience um, like confusion might be or maybe so maybe you can make the audience get get a little bit scared of the piece because the intention of grave is usually you know like the, to scare people for divinity reasons for divine for which for Jesus Christ, I don't know, for God, you know, and so on. The, the meaning, the whole meaning of rock music, actually, is to scare the audience. I mean, I mean, like, usually, not every time. Because the, um, there's also Andante, Adagio, um, Fugue, and so on. All of them are written in different intentions. But this grey part is written for this thing that I've actually just said. Now, now that, now, now that if we just actually um, start the first section, it starts with uh, this melody, this like a um, like the fourth note actually, and follows the the fourth note follows the uh, semiquavers of course and and repeats itself. So the first part is um, let me see uh, the first part is actually. Um, you start. You, you you introduce the part, the grey part. Me me by more. It's like E E flat. It's it's E flat. Starts with E flat and just follows it with semiquavers, and also the thirty tooth note actually. Um, we should play this three first three notes actually. First three notes, kind of a slow. Um, because it's also grave and adagio, so slower. But at the second time, you just see this 32, actually, no. You should play it faster than this, faster than grave. So you can just, you can put a meaning on it, put, 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 actually put a meaning on grave. And just, this repeats itself. And also bass clef, in, in, on, the, on, the, on the bass clef section, after the note, you you have to mute it. You have to mute it because you you might just screw up the notes. You you just you might you screw up the melody actually. So the audience doesn't understand you know which is melody or not. Of course you can just you can actually listen to the bass clef. You can actually see the bass clef. But you know you really get confused after this one because there are tons of notes. Um, all of them just mixed together. It just makes a little bit cheesy sound. So you you should so so they come. Composer actually, composer, were uh, intended to mute the note so to mute the note so audience can understand this section, and it just repeats itself till till andante, and which is a lot of different analyzing. Sure. Um, the first section actually starts a pretty low music. It should be like like you can you, you can even say it's written in forte. I might add. It might even add just forte. I mean, uh, let me see. I can actually just make it. It's just written in forte. 
you can pretty just play like Forte. Um, and afterwards, you can play those notes in actually just slighter than Forte. So you can add actually a little bit of softness unless you play the harpsichord. Because uh, in harpsichord, you can't just, you know, like play the nuance uh, in Fano. Yeah, there's an actually nuance. There, there's actually no like those degrees. So you should actually. Um, that's why in piano. That's why there is a, there is a mute button. Um, and also in harpsichord, if you stop the note, it automatically stops. It automatic automatically gets muted. So that's why the composer probably wrote like this. So you can stop it. And you can make the audience listen to the melody. And this section it just goes and so on and so on so on. La 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 la. Okay. And the this part. Um, we, the the composer is is actually is, is wishing to um, make it more louder. Of course, you, you should make it louder because in the harpsichord, if you just in harpsichord, when you play the harpsichord, the note, when the pitch is high, the nuance is getting much more higher than this. So you should play it kind of in forte too. I mean, you should make it, you should play this in forte at this part. Um, and afterwards, you should silencing it. You should silence it. You just play it pretty pretty slower I mean not even slower but just play a little bit quiet like you just reflect the melody of it the second part of this one is reflecting the first three but first two bars um, the f I mean the first three bars actually showing us the the main melody and the second the third bar actually shows the reflectioning of it reflection same goes for all of those next bars and then when the when the at the end of them um and one of one of the thing i say you just you don't have to play this pretty fast you should play at slow tempo because grave means so slow and a dodge is a little bit a slightly faster slightly faster than grave in necessary notes like th like the the th like thirty tooth notes actually, and those notes actually you should you should you should have actually you should play at fast tempo, and when when the at the end of it you should just repeat the whole section. You you, you actually you usually actually repeat the the same goes for for the first two bars and the fourth on the fourth and fifth bar, you can actually see the same pattern of course and also the same pattern actually continues it's actually expanding it the composer it's continuing the melody and after the sun drops it means the at the end of the day at the end of the melody you just finish the track as you just finished a piece and you you usually move on to the next section which is andante so what I mean, what I actually mean is that you should, you shouldn't play so fast because the intention of playing this piece is, is to, um, like probably like not going too fast and just, but slow, but a little bit faster than grave because you do introduce the first, I mean, you introduce partita, so you should play, you should play like an introduction. For us, for the audience, when the second part comes, you should you should actually continue the whole melody, and also the grey one, also is the structure, is the basic structure of the whole section of the whole sinfonia, and that is the another talk. Um, if you have any questions, you can actually comment below and just yeah. If you just like like my video, you can just like. You can if you. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, well, I'm, I'm pretty appreciate it for it for it. Well, thanks for listening to me. I'll see you next time on another analyzing.